Hello everybody and welcome back to FN 1140 Finance and today we're going to start looking at Unit 2. Unit 2 looks at loan repayments. You know for example if you're running a business you're probably not going to be able to buy everything with cash unless you're independently wealthy and probably nor should you. The fact of the matter is that most large investments are bought with borrowed money. So essentially, we get something called a loan. And when we look at a loan, a loan is something that has to be repaid to the lending institution, and it has to be repaid over a period of time. So we use uh, our revenues based on the asset that we buy in order to pay off the loan. Now essentially, we're looking at two very different types of loans here. That The mathematics of them are pretty similar. Essentially, we're looking at short-term loans, and we're looking at long-term loans. And we call these long-term loans mortgages. Okay. The first focus I'll look at is short-term loans. When we go and borrow money, in the in the short term, we can pay off relatively small amounts. So let's think, for example, uh, what we're going to buy. Let's say we're going to buy, a, oh, I don't know, a, a computer. So we go and borrow uh, $1,000 to pay for that computer, and we say we're going to pay it off over, let's say, a, a five-year term. Now, over that period of time, the bank or the lender might say, well, you know, we'll, we'll stick to a, a given interest rate because the period of time is relatively short and uh, so as a result we can very easily calculate that with a short-term loan. Other things that we buy could take a lot longer to pay off. Let's take for example a, a building. Let's assume we buy a million dollar building and it will take us about 25 years to pay off that building. Well in that particular instance the loan stretches over a long enough period of time that we could see changes in the interest rate and the lending institution has to have some flexibility to change the rate of interest. So what long-term loans do is they tend to allow for variation in the interest rate over time and we'll take a look at those as well. First and foremost, however, let's take a look at short-term loans and how short-term loans are, are looked at here. So if we look at a short-term loan, a short-term loan Essentially, what we have to do is a, a series of steps whenever we calculate how we're going to pay that off. Well, step one is it, really to find the payment. And, and whenever we think of a payment, the payment is really contingent on a couple of things. First of all, the principal, uh, the interest rate, and the time. Now we've seen so far in this course that principal rate and time are very useful to calculate the payment. So what we'll do is use these important factors and calculate the payment based on that. Once we get that done, then we go to step two. And step two is to create what's called an amortization table. And the amortization table shows how much we pay on the loan. It shows how much uh, of that payment goes towards principal, how much of it goes towards interest, and finally what the ending value or the ending balance of the loan is at the end of the given period. And it does that for each and every single period, payment period of the loan. So we're going to look at uh, amortization tables in here as well. So let's get started with an example. Let's say, for example, you borrow $1,000, and we're going to pay it off in five years, and we'll, we'll make equal payments in each year over five years, and let's assume that a 10% annual interest, and we're going to say the payment once a year 
and uh, paid at end of the year. So we got some basic facts that we know when we go to borrow, we know generally how much we're borrowing, we know generally how much the interest rate is that's stated, we know how long we want to be able to pay that off, and uh, all we're really trying to do is calculate, again, the payment. So we have to be able to capture that. So if we go borrow $1,000, we're going to have $1,000 in our hand today, and we're going to pay it off over time. So essentially, what we're calculating then is the present value of the loan. So we use our, our present value formula, and we know our present value formula is BB equals PMT, 1 minus 1 plus I to the minus N, which is the number of periods, over I. So essentially, that's the formula we're using. So let's take a, a simple example here now. And what we're trying to do is to calculate here, in this case, we're calculating the payment. That's the mystery amount right here now. So let's plug these numbers into this equation. So we've got a present value of 1,000 equals the payment, which we don't know. Um, 1 minus 1 plus the interest rate. Again, the interest rate is 10% annually, 0.10. And the number of periods is 5, and it's, it's one payment per year, so it's minus 5 over I. And, oh, sorry, I should check that I. The I is 0 0.10. So we plugged all those numbers in, and what we're going to get then is, um, is this right here, 1,000 equals PMT. And again, we're looking for PMT uh, times 3.791. And again, you got to be careful of rounding, but uh, 3.791. Now, if we if we take this, then PMT then is 1,000 divided by 3.791, and that works out to approximately $263.78 per year. That's the payment. Now, again, you want to think about this in your head to say, does that make sense? Well, 263 times 5 is about $1,300 round numbers, and you know that you're going to end up the, the amount of money originally borrowed was 1000 so 1300 seems reasonable in terms of the total payment because the $300 will be accumulated interest. So we know, and we've calculated the very first thing, that our payment is $263.78. Okay, so now we want to be able to look at our repayment schedule for that loan. Now, we've come up with the payment. I'm going to round the numbers to $263.80, just, just to round it. Uh, for the sake of uh, doing this. So we've calculated our payment to be around 263.80. Now we need to build a repayment schedule. Well, we know that it's going to be paid off over a period of five years. So the first thing we need to do is payment number. So we're going to one, two, three, four, and five. We've got five payments being made on this. And then we need to know our beginning balance. That's the next column. Our beginning balance, we borrowed $1,000, so we're going to say the beginning balance in the very first instance is $1,000. The payment that's made is $263.80. And then we have a, a couple of columns that we've got to do a little bit of calculation on. The principal, repay, and the interest. Okay. So in terms of uh, the principal repayment and the interest, we know that our payment consists of two components, the principal and the interest. So what we need to be able to do is to break this number out into its two components. Well, the easy, it's, it's relatively easy to do that. What we do is we, we first figure out our interest. Now, we're carrying that $1,000 for one year, and we're paying 10% interest. So there's $100 in interest accumulated on that $1,000. So all we need to do then is take our payment, 
180 minus the 100 in, in terms of the actual interest. And the 163.80 then is the actual principal repayment. Then we say, okay, well, what is our ending balance? So we've taken that thousand dollars, we've paid 163.80 on it. So that means that 836.20 is the ending balance. So just to be clear on this, now we we start with the beginning balance. We're making a payment of 263.80. The interest on that $1,000 we can calculate very easily by taking your beginning balance and applying the 10% interest because we're carrying that amount for the year. So the interest is $100. We subtract the interest component out of payment and we'll get our principal component. We start with the $1,000. We paid $163.80 as the principal repayment. So the ending balance is $836.20. Let's go down to the second year. So at the beginning of the second year, 836.20 is the beginning balance. We make a payment of 263.80 again because that's our consistent payment. And then we say, well, how much interest is accumulated on 836.20, which we're carrying for the year? Well, we know it to be 10%. So 83.62. Now, then we can figure out, well, how much of that is principal? Then if we take the 263.80 minus the 83.62 and we know then in this particular instance that 180.18 is principal repayment. We take the 836.20 which is the beginning balance, subtract off the amount that we paid on the principal which is 180.18 and we get the ending balance to be 65603. So we know at the end of year two, we owe 65603 on our loan. This process repeats every single year. So again, 65603 is our beginning balance for year three. We're going to make a payment of 263.80. The interest on 65603 is 6560. Then we can figure out that payment minus the interest will give us the amount of principal. And the amount of principal we pay is 198.19. Then we take our beginning balance, subtract off the amount of principal, and that will give us a ending balance of 457.83. That ending balance goes to our beginning balance for year four, which is 457.83. We're paying 263.80 on that. So we ask ourselves, so how much interest? 45.78, which is 10% of the beginning balance. We then can calculate our actual payment to be 263.80 minus the 45.78, and that will give us a um, uh, the repayment of principal of 218.01. This means that we we've got a beginning balance of 457.83. Take off the principal payment that we made, and there's 200 and 200 and 39.82 left. Uh, the the uh, the two uh, the two thirty nine eighty two is the beginning balance. The payment is two sixty three eighty. We ask ourselves, well, what's uh, the beginning balance on uh, uh, what's the interest on the beginning balance twenty three ninety eight. So the payment uh, of the principal then would be two hundred and. Uh, uh, 1583. Three. So the ending balance in our case will be zero. So we're coming down here and we're making all these payments and those payments effectively are going to zap out the, uh, the amount that's owed on this uh, on this loan. 
So this is a really how a repayment schedule works, and I want you to uh, kind of do some examples with those now.